Good morning and happy Mother's Day. Thank you for worshiping with Resurrection United Methodist Church in Hastings, Minnesota. Whether you are worshiping near or far, we're so happy you've joined us today. Let's begin our time of worship with a song. Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away to a on God's lesser shore. I'll fly away. This life have grown, I'll fly away like a bird from prison walls have flown. Gracious God, as we continue to navigate very unusual and trying times amidst a global pandemic, we strive to keep our eyes on you. We thank you for your unwavering love, God, as we hold tightly to your promises. With each and every day, God, you reveal yourself to us in creation, in scripture, in prayer, and in those around us. Open our eyes to those revelations, God, that we may hold on to the hope that comes to us through faith in your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Will you please join me in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. for the 
this day we've gathered in your name calling out to you your glory like a fire awakening desire will burn our hearts with you Descending like a cloud, you're standing with us now. Lord, unveil our eyes. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see. Once again, good morning and happy Mother's Day. Of course, the category of mom covers all kinds of people. If you are providing nurturing, unconditional love and guidance to someone, you are taking on a motherly role and the world is a better place because of you. So if you are a mother in any way, shape or form, happy Mother's Day. I hope you are able to connect with your loved ones today. I am a mother, and I had a wonderful mother, wonderful parents, actually. I grew up in a Christian home in White Bear Lake. I have five amazing siblings. I was always very proud of our family of eight. We would take up a whole pew at church, and on those occasions when we went to a restaurant, we needed a big table to seat the whole family. I grew up hoping for at least six kids of my own someday, but I didn't have my first child until I was 31. My second child came at age 33, and my third child at age 35. 
I was really hoping for twins at least one of those times because I felt like I was running out of time and I really wanted more children. Fast forward to 2008 when I was hired by Resurrection. With each year, I had more and more young people in my life. Kids would come into my office after school just to chat. And one of those lovelies even put Mama Julie on my mailbox at work. And then one day as I was looking at all the pictures I had received over the years, each one representing a young person for whom I truly care, it occurred to me God had given me many kids, far more than I ever could have imagined. And now, of course, with adult kids comes marriages, new daughters, new sons, and grandkids, and so on. So why do I tell you this story? Because things don't always go the way we plan, but God, God always has a plan. Let's begin with a piece of scripture today from the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 13. It says, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Today, I want to talk to you about joy. If you know me at all, you know I am generally a pretty happy person. My nickname in high school was Smiley, if that gives you any indication. I love to laugh and I am happy most of the time. But I am also a joyful person. Happiness is not the same as joy. They are really two different things. Going on vacation makes me happy. A new outfit makes me happy. Being able to get a haircut right now would make me really happy. But joy, joy is something different, something that goes deeper. I asked Google what the difference is between joy and happiness. This is what I found out. Happiness is about the self's pleasure. Happiness may dwell on materialistic worldly pleasure while joy is derived from soul satisfying emotional well-being. So how is it with your soul today? As a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ, I think it even goes beyond that. A well-known pastor and author, Rick Warren, defines joy in this way. Joy is the settled assurance that God is in control of all the details of my life, the quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right, and the determined choice to praise God in every situation. Did you notice how he mentions that joy is a choice? Let's talk about that. We are definitely emotional beings. We are made to feel emotions like joy, anger, fear, happiness, sadness, surprise, and the list goes on. To choose joy doesn't mean we somehow ignore all those other emotions, putting on a brave face for the world, a kind of robotic response as we go through life. Our emotions are real and often valid responses to events happening in our lives. However, 
as we mentioned last week, we do need to take control of our thoughts and emotions, choosing not to focus on our circumstances, but on God. Of course, the ability to control our thoughts and emotions can be challenging. These days, just turning on the news can be a roller coaster of emotions. And as I mentioned, the emotions we're feeling are real. However, they are not always valid. Sometimes our emotions are out of control. We may fixate or ruminate on something and our response may be unhealthy. We need another voice, another perspective. Each one of us needs friends and mentors, both personally and professionally. We are not meant to live this life alone. Ecclesiastes in the fourth chapter says this, two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help, but someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Now, we're not just talking about a physical fall here. There are many ways we can fall. We need to be talking to each other, supporting each other, now more than ever. As Rick Warren suggested, to trust God is in control, working for our good even in what we perceive as bad times, knowing that ultimately everything is going to be okay, that is where we begin to find lasting joy. Prayer and scripture can help us with this. Psalm 94, 19 says, when my anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought joy to my soul. We can find that consolation when we pray and spend time in scripture. If our joy is rooted only in our circumstances, it won't be a lasting joy. In addition to consolation, spending time in prayer and scripture also encourages us to rejoice for the countless blessings in our lives, which leads to gratitude and giving glory to God in all things. That puts us on the path to true joy. Now, I know COVID-19 definitely challenges us in the gratitude category. While some of us may be grateful for the unforeseen blessings this pandemic has brought, things like more time with our loved ones, a new appreciation for our family and friends, a slower paced life, for others, this may be a time full of fear and worry, perhaps isolation and profound grief. The waiting for this to be all over can seem endless. And just a quick word on waiting. Waiting is never wasted. God uses these times to prepare us for the plans and purpose that he has for each one of us, whatever they may be. There are many stories of waiting throughout the Bible and each time God had a plan. God is always faithful. God is unchanging. So what about when the catastrophe hits 
when the bottom falls out. A friend of mine told me about a book by Don Barton. It's called Laughing Through the Ugly Cry. I've only heard an excerpt from the book, but it's definitely something I've added to my summer reading list. This woman, Dawn Barton, has endured more tragedy than I can even comprehend. She lost a child, suffered a divorce, was brutally raped, is a cancer survivor, and believe it or not, the list goes on. At the loss of her child, she said she wept so much she didn't think her body could produce even one more tear. Talk about a life not going according to plan. It has not been an easy road for her to say the least, but the remarkable thing, this woman has joy. She said perhaps she has more joy than the average person due to the amount of pain she's endured, but one thing is for sure, she has a true joy that comes only from God. Our opening scripture said, when we trust in God, he will fill us completely with joy and peace. Dawn Barton puts her trust in God. It's a daily decision. And even after all she's endured, she has true joy. That doesn't mean she never cries or grieves. It doesn't mean everything is sunshine and butterflies, but she keeps her eyes on Jesus, who, as she puts it, is the king of the comeback story. Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, walked this earth fully God and fully human. He experienced the full range of human emotions. We see examples of this throughout the New Testament. He was tempted in the desert. He wept when his friend Lazarus died. He was angry when the temple was turned into a marketplace. He felt alone and was in agony in the Garden of Gethsemane. And the list goes on. In the 15th chapter of John, verses 9 through 12, Jesus says this, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. Love, it sums up all the commandments. The key here is that lasting joy isn't about us. It's not about what we want, what we need, what we can acquire or achieve. Loving God and loving others brings us joy. And we love because he, because he first loved us. Happiness is fleeting. It's of this world. It's all about us. 
but true joy it never ends God is our joy Father Son and Holy Spirit God is the author of love he sacrificed everything to have a relationship with us Jesus has paid the ransom for our sins with his death death on a cross a perfect selfless love a gift that is ours for the taking and Jesus calls us commands us to love others like he loves us it turns out lasting joy it comes from love not just any love but the extravagant love of our Creator our Savior the Holy Spirit that dwells within us if only we say yes will you pray with me holy God you are our joy help us to trust you to praise you in every situation knowing that your love is beyond comprehension perfect beautiful and infinite help us to love others as you love us we praise you for who you are may all the glory and honor and praise be yours in Jesus name we pray amen
Thank you for worshiping with us today. To see past messages, to donate, or to get the GPS Bible study that accompanies today's message, please visit our website at resumc.org. And now receive a final blessing. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, praying that you move forward with a joyful heart loving and encouraging each other in Christ's name. May God, who gives us his peace, be with you all. Amen.